Now we get to look at a technique for implementing or visualizing the implementation of these digital compensators. So we're going to start by looking at the block diagram for the system. If we have a feedback form for our system, then the compensator is going to receive the error signal. The output of that we'll call X, and then the compensator is cascaded with the plant. So the output of the plant is the output of the system, C of Z. And what we want to get now is an expression for X star of T, which is the sampled time output of the compensator. And we want this in terms of the error and in terms of previous values of the input. So we have E star of T, which is the current sampled value, X star at T minus NT, and N here is some positive integer, so we want past values of the compensator output, and we also want past values of the error. So we want to be able to get the current output of the compensator in terms of these other values. Let's look at this transfer function for a second order compensator. We have third order polynomial in the numerator and a second order polynomial in the de denominator, so the characteristic equation would be second order. And then the coefficients are a3 goes with z3 in the numerator, a2 in the numerator, b2 goes with z squared in the denominator, etc. So we're going to cross multiply and we get an expression that looks like this. And then we're going to solve this for the term with the highest power of z that's operating on x of z. So that is b2 z squared x of z. So we're going to solve for that term there. So we just bring over these other terms times x of z to the right hand side. And now we're going to divide by this coefficient in order to get this expression for x of z. So we've divided both sides of the equation by b2 z squared. And you can see we're left with a3 z or a3 over b2 times z plus a2 over b2 plus a1 over b2 times z inverse and all of that's multiplied by e of z and likewise for x of z so we just divided both sides by b2 z squared and rewriting that expression we're going to take the inverse z transform and we're employing the real translation theorem in order to relate these powers of z to the sample time functions. So we get that x star of t is a3 over b2 times e star of t at time t plus one sampling period. Little t is our current time. And then a2 over b2 times e star of t. Um, we already have the... Um, so this is just leaving the... error in terms of z and we just take the inverse z transform of that function in, in z. So we're not actually taking the z transform here. I mean we are but there's no numerical example. So we're just leaving it as e star of t. Um, and then we have a1 over b2 and that's multiplied by z inverse e of z and so we end up with e star at t minus one sampling period and that comes from the real translation theorem. And likewise for the z negative two it's um, delayed by two sampling periods. So what we see here is that to implement this compensator we would need future values for the error which is impossible. And we can draw one conclusion from our from this is that we for our compensators we require that the order of the numerator is less than or equal to the order of the denominator. That's a mistake. So this right here should be less than the order, less than or equal to the order of the denominator. So now that I've fixed that error or that typo there, we can say, see that we require that the order of the denominator for our compensator, I don't think denominator is a word, so the order of our numerator is greater, less than or equal to the order of our denominator. And so we're, for this example, we'll let a3 equals zero and we end up with this expression for the output, the sample time output of the compensator. Now that we take that expression, here is a flowchart, an example of a flowchart that you could use for programming this compensator. 
and we have here the input would be the sample time error and we want to multiply that by A2 over B2 and adding to that we want to take the product of the sample time error at one sampling period previous multiply that by A over A1 over B2 and add to that um, this the error delayed two sampling periods and or from the error from two sampling periods ago and multiply that by A0 over B2 and so all of those terms are added to these delayed values for the output. So we delay, we take the output from one sampling period ago, multiply it by B1 over B2, and then from all that we're going to subtract the output from two sampling periods ago, multiply by B0 over B2. And this is just a block diagram for this expression here. And then you can see we have the output, the sample time output of our compensator. So we're going to look at um, an example. And this is the PD compensator that we designed in the previous video. We had the transfer function in the S domain was 1.94 times the sum of S and 42.5. And then we used the Tustin transform to get uh, an approximation for GC of Z. And we came up with this expression. And so now we want to use what we've learned so far in this video in order to come up with the sample time output of that compensator in terms of the error and previous values of the output so that we could write a program for it. Now let me just rewrite this in terms of the coefficients a1, a0, b1, b0. So here's gc of z. And we're going to go through the same process to solve for the sample time output. So first we cross multiply, get B1Z plus B0 times XZ, etc. And now we want to solve this first equation for the term with the highest power of Z operating on X of Z. So that's B1Z. So we subtract B0's XZ from both sides. And now we divide by this coefficient here. So divide both sides by B1 over Z and we end up with x of z is a1 over b1 plus a0 over b1 times z inverse all that times e z and then the inverse z transform will get an expression for our sample time output in terms of the current error the error from one sampling period ago and the output from here's another error this should be one sampling period ago instead of two let me fix that Beware the dangers of copy and paste. So here is our expression, x star of t. And we'll flip over to a drawing of the flowchart for this system. And here we go. Let me bring this in closer. OK. Mm, it would be helpful to have this on up at the same time, I think, so. <laughs> okay, here is our sample time output for this transfer function or for this compensator. And there's a flow chart. So here's our output, x star of t, and we have the error. So we multiply the error by a1 over b1. And to that, we're going to add the error from one sampling period ago times A0 over B1. So there we have that term. And to that sum, or from that sum, we will subtract our output from one sampling period ago multiplied by B0 over B1. So that's this term here. And there's a flowchart. And from this compensator that we found, we have A is, or A1 is 470, A0 is 306. B1 and B0 are both equal to 1. And let's just say the sampling period is, oh, well, to get these uh, terms here, A1 and A0, those depend on T, according to the Tustin transform. So in the previous video, uh, T was 1 millisecond, and in this video, I used T of uh, 10 milliseconds. And so we have different coefficients here after the Tustin transform for the same compensator in the S domain. Anyhow, back to this 
point t is 0 0.01 so we could substitute those values into this flow chart and we end up with this here so we've got our error multiply it by 470 um, add to that the error from one or 10 milliseconds ago multiplied by 306 from that sum we will subtract that compensator's output from 10 milliseconds ago and so you can see a process for implementing um, a compensator all the way from the S-plane and into a digital computer.